Have you also been stuck in between four walls for the past two months, living in loungewear, watching a little too much Netflix, and attempting to be productive every day but failing more often than not? Are you wondering whether you even know how to actually get dressed anymore in something other than joggers and a hoodie? Is that how you do it? Don't worry, I got you. In this episode, we'll be going over 30 outfit ideas for when quarantine is over at last and we can finally put on some real clothes again. Let's start with the basics. I for one have come to appreciate my jeans more as I've been spending the last two months in joggers. You can never go wrong with a classic combo of blue jeans and a white tee. Wear that with some clean white sneakers and you've now passed men's style 101. You're welcome. To add a little bit of personality to the outfit, I like to opt for a t-shirt in a more relaxed cut with boxy sleeves and tuck that in to create a more interesting silhouette. Add some subtle jewelry and you have a simple outfit that may not scream look at me now to every bypasser but looks put together. An easy way to change up the whole vibe of your outfit is to simply swap the sneakers for some leather boots. I'm a big fan of Chelsea boots, I think they're really great for dressing up the more casual outfits. The contrast between the sleekness of the boots and the rawness of the denim makes for a cool pairing in my opinion. Staying in the denim zone, one way I like to play around with jeans is to experiment with different kinds of fits. I never thought I'd say this, but I think there can be a place for the right pair of skinny jeans in your wardrobe, when worn with the right outfit. It definitely has a rocker vibe to it so I would fully embrace that and channel my inner rock star with Chelsea boots and a dark denim on denim look. On the opposite end of the spectrum, I also love my wider jeans. They make for a totally different vibe and I'm into it. Here I paired these wide fit raw hem jeans with a fitted lightweight crew neck sweater up top. The idea was to create a contrast between the raw hem of the jeans and the more classy Scandinavian minimal vibe of the fitted sweater. When in doubt, I think you can't go wrong with some straight fit dark indigo jeans. That's one item that I think will always be in style. To keep it modern, try keeping the outfit as a whole more relaxed, not too slim, for example with a vest, hoodie and chunky sneakers for a streetwear inspired silhouette. With summer fast approaching, it means short sleeve shirts can now be moved from the bottom shelf of your wardrobe back to center stage. I'm usually not big on printed Hawaiian type of shirts, but I love this one because of its muted monochromatic colorway. Paired with some slim black jeans and boots, you have yourself a perfect summer date night look. One of my favorite types of shirts is the Cuban collar short sleeved shirt. It's a classic menswear piece and a summer staple. I like mine in a nice and airy relaxed fit. I want the fabric to flow naturally rather than hug my body. You can never go wrong with a tonal look in a neutral color. Here I think the contrast between the collegiate vibe of the converse, the more grown up trousers and shirts tied in with a tonal color palette makes for a cool casual daytime outfit. For more of a statement, try a striped version of the Cuban collar shirt. A fun way to wear stripes is to actually fully embrace the pattern and go stripes on stripes. The key is to go for different sizes of stripes, so for example, bolder, chunky stripes on top with thinner, more subtle stripes on the pants. I'm tucking in my shirt here and leaving a few buttons undone so that the tank top peeks out underneath for a casual 70s kind of vibe. You can also make a statement with an accent collar on your shirt. This burnt orange short sleeve shirt has a regular collar and is a little less flowy. The fabric has more structure to it, but I quite like it. The longer boxy sleeves gives it a bit of a Korean fashion vibe. And I kept the rest of the outfit in black and white to give the spotlight to the shirt. Whoa, whoa, not completely sockless, you fool. Never completely sockless. In order to get that summery, nonchalant, sockless look without the smelly feet and nasty fungal infections, just put on some no-show socks. You'll thank me later. Put on a pair of straight, dark indigo jeans, insert your sockless, non-sockless feet into a pair of suede loafers, and tuck a bread-on striped t-shirt in those jeans for a Ralph Lauren approved Riviera look. Are you more of a Scandinavian minimalist type? In that case, a monochromatic navy look with some lightweight crop chinos, an oversized shirt and clean white sneakers might be more up your alley. And if you prefer dressier shoes, try a pair of suede derbies paired with chinos and a Cuban collar shirt. Mixing different earth tones together is always a winning combo. Mother Nature definitely understood color theory. 
The only time going completely sockless is acceptable is when wearing sandals. Actually, even more than acceptable, I would say it's encouraged or arguably required. I would style some classic Birkenstocks along with white fit linen trousers and a tucked in t-shirt for an easy daytime look at the beach or a very casual event. Okay, so given the circumstances, chances are that for the working people among us, a return to the office in the middle of summer might be happening. And we all know that taking public transport at peak hours and sitting at a desk all sweaty isn't really the most pleasant experience. So how do you tackle the heat while still looking business appropriate, you ask? One thing is for sure, you want to ditch that slim fit heavyweight wool suit you've been wearing the rest of the year. Instead, try a suit that's a little bit roomier and a breathable summer fabric. This wide fit suit is made from a cotton and linen blend, both of which make it a great choice for the warmer days. I'm wearing it with a tucked in crisp white tee and minimal white sneakers for a clean summer office look. If you're not a fan of the wider look on tailoring, you can definitely opt for a slimmer silhouette, just don't go skin tight. It won't make you or your colleagues any more comfortable. Too hot for a full suit? In that case, a simple blue poplin shirt tucked in some navy chinos can look very professional, minus the armpit sweat. I'm wearing white sneakers again, but if it's a more corporate environment, you can definitely replace that by some dressier monk straps or brogues for example. This is the least formal and perhaps slightly more fashion-y option, but if you're in a more casual work environment, a boxy white short sleeve shirt tucked in some chinos can be a nice, heat-friendly option. I paired it with my trusty Chelsea boots and some subtle jewelry to dress up the outfit a little bit so it looks more fashion, less McDonald's manager uniform. I love how the sleeves are longer and wider than normal, giving the shirt that more stylized boxy fit which in my opinion makes the look more interesting. There is no faster way to get a heat stroke than by wearing the wrong fabric during a hot summer day, so you want to make sure your fabric game is just as good as your outfits. The common choice of hot weather friendly fabric is linen, and for good reason. If you can get past the fact that you're going to have to be more diligent with the ironing, it's one of the best moisture wicking breathable fabrics. Try wearing an oversized linen shirt half tucked in some relaxed trousers and some loafers for a cool and casual beach vibe. The cotton t-shirt is arguably the most common item of clothing, but not all cottons are created equal. When the heat wave hits, you want to be prepared with a lightweight cotton tee. This one in particular from Ascot is made from a super lightweight Egyptian cotton at 120 grams per square meter. Or in layman's terms, it's very, very light. Plus, if your t-shirt is light enough, you may even get away with adding a second lightweight layer on top. Keep it tonal for an easy and chic daytime look. This is not something you see often in western fashion, but I love this garment. You might have seen me pull it out in one of my past videos. It's called a Jinbei and it's originally a loungewear item from Japan, often worn in summer. I found this one at Muji, it's made from a super lightweight cotton so it's excellent for the warm weather and you can easily layer it on top of a simple t-shirt in a casual outfit. Plus it has the added benefit of making you feel like a badass samurai. Okay, so I understand that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but if you don't mind a little see-throughness, a loosely woven mesh t-shirt like this will definitely do well in keeping you cool during summer. I personally like the see-through vibe, it's a little bit daring and a bolder choice than your standard t-shirt. If you don't want to feel too exposed, layering it under a casual shirt worn open can be a good option to still make a statement, but being a little more subtle about it. This one is a little bit cheating, but if we're talking summer outfits, you can also just cut the fabric entirely, or half of it at least, and opt for some shorts. Yes, I know, I'm wearing socks with shorts. I understand it's controversial, but I think it can be done with the right outfit. The sockless look in this outfit just seemed a little plain to me, so I liked the idea of adding the long white socks to go along with the sneakers and give the look that sporty vibe. You may hate it, you may love it, either way, feel free to share in the comments and start a heated debate if you so desire. Are coffee shops look a thing or did I just invent an outfit category? Because they sure as hell are a thing to me. I love working in coffee shops when editing to get a change of scenery from the four walls of my apartment and it helps me be more creative. And fingers crossed things will go back to normal sooner rather than later and we'll all be able to do that again. Anyways, I digress. There are very specific types of clothing that I gravitate towards when I'm dressing to go to a coffee shop. And the number one criteria for me is comfort. I have to be cozy and comfortable in my clothes, especially the pants. I often find myself wearing lighter colors since this is usually a daytime activity and I tend to prefer lighter colors during the day and darker colors during the evening. 
More specifically, I often go for earth tones. I prefer the t-shirt I'm wearing to be in a relaxed fit and the pants to have an elasticated waistband so that I can have more freedom of movement and not feel constricted at any point in my clothing. One important tip, always bring a cozy sweatshirt with you in case they go a little too crazy with the AC. If you prefer the look of slimmer pants, consider opting for ones that have a bit of stretch to them. You'll be way more comfortable when sitting down for long periods of time. I often gravitate towards monochrome looks. There's something about a tonal outfit that just gives it a loungewear feel even if it's not loungewear and I'm all about that cozy vibe. Or you can also just wear actual loungewear. In this case, for me, it's important that the fit is immaculate because the wrong fit can very quickly change the mood from luxe loungewear to pajamas, which is obviously not the vibe that I'm going for. Oversized clothing is all the rage right now, and although I'm a fan, I know not everyone loves it. But if you're in the naysayers camp, consider giving it a try before dismissing it completely. I think a well-designed piece that's oversized in the right areas can look very good with the right outfit. The oversized sweater is probably the most accessible item to dip your toe into the trend. What I like about this sweater in particular is that although it's oversized in the sleeves, mostly in the length of the sleeves, it's actually cropped in the body, which makes for a pretty cool contrast in my opinion. I would tend to wear a piece like this with high-waisted pants so as to not reveal my belly button every time I raise my arms. Small tip, when wearing high-waisted pants, consider opting for high-top sneakers or boots to keep the proportions of the legs balanced. I don't think this is mandatory, but something to consider. I love a good oversized shirt. Remember, you don't want to just buy one that's two sizes too large, because although that may work a small portion of the time, usually you'll get a much better fit with a piece that was intentionally designed to fit oversized. I decided to wear Chelsea boots here to elongate the legs so that the shirt doesn't overpower the bottom half too much. You can never go wrong with a well-designed oversized tee. This one from Uniqlo has got elbow length sleeves and a standard length with a boxy cut. Combine it with a pair of shorts and sneakers for a look that's simple, but definitely not sloppy. With this specific outfit, I actually preferred the look of black sneakers rather than white ones as I found that it worked better with that color palette. One of my favorite ways to rock the oversized trend is with a pair of oversized trousers. I'm talking wide legs and contrasting that with a slim fit t-shirt tucked in. I feel like when you first get into oversized clothing, it's natural to go for an oversized top and a normal bottom half, but I think the opposite can also look great, if not better. I think it's fair to say that as soon as quarantine is over, people will be hunting for a date. And when it comes to date outfits, obviously you want to make a good impression, especially if it's your first date. But I think it's important that you still show your true style because you can't be showing up one way and then it turns out you actually never dressed like that. Personally, I'm a big fan of high-low combos, mixing dressier, more elevated pieces with more casual items. If we're going to a fancy restaurant or bar, I like a good statement shirt. Not a tacky one though. If it has a print, you want it to feel elevated, not like a tacky going out shirt that you used to wear in high school. Here I paired a slightly oversized print shirt with some more casual crop trousers and a pair of Chelsea boots for a clean look that's put together without feeling businessy. When in doubt, you can never go wrong with a clean white shirt though. For a more casual alternative, say if you're going on a daytime date, I would go with some classic blue denim, a more casual top, probably a short sleeve shirt in this weather, but one with an interesting silhouette. And I'd finish it off with some clean sneakers. I like these XL Arigato ones with the bird detail because they make a subtle statement without feeling try hard. Plus it can make for a good conversation opener if your date notices it. And those are all 30 outfits. I'm really looking forward to quarantine being over so that I can actually wear some of these outside of my apartment. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really starting to miss the outside world and socializing with people and meeting friends. But in the meantime, I will continue putting outfits together every day just for the fun of it because fashion makes me happy and I enjoy getting dressed in the morning, putting an outfit together. It lifts my mood up and brightens my day. So I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.